Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about my family history book. This is a second book I've written. I've mentioned my memoirs, and I said I'm not going to publish it. This one I did make prints of and send them to a lot of people. I want to talk about it, and then I want to tell you why I'm talking about it. So, years ago, I moved to California in 1987. I bought a house in 1995. Soon after that, my mom started sending me family photos. She knew I was interested in our family history. I was already starting to do a little very primitive early genealogical work. Also, because I lived in California, which is very dry and has a very moderate climate, it's never super hot. Well, sometimes it is. It's never really, really cold. It's pretty much a constant compared to a lot of other places, temperature and humidity. Perfect place to store photos. She started sending me more and more and more photos. I didn't recognize a lot of these people. I mean, look at the mustache on this guy. I wish I could grow a mustache like that. I didn't recognize a lot of them. She told me the ones she did recognize, but there were a lot that she didn't know. So I took as many notes as I could. My mom passed away in 2013. I felt bad that I had all these photos. At this point, it was over 2,000 photos that I had. So um, my husband actually bought me a scanner, and it was a really nice scanner. It lets you put multiple photos on it at once, and it would scan them and then emit them as individual JPEGs. So it took a long time, but I scanned all 2,000 photos and put them in a public, well, not public. I put them in a cloud repository and then sent links to my siblings and my cousins so they could access them. I mean, for some of them, there were probably photos in there they had never seen in their entire life. But then a few years later, I did 23andMe. Um, this was back when they did your genealogy and your medical history and a bunch of other things for a $99 little vial. So I discovered from that that I was British and Irish, which I knew, but also German, which I think I knew, French, which I did not know, Scandinavian, which I certainly did not know, and even Native American, which I had never heard from anyone in my family. So I decided to do research because it's a lot easier to do research online now. There's a lot of cens census records you can access. A lot of other people have done research so you can connect your family trees. And once you connect your tree, you get all of their research and they get all of yours. So there's some really cool stuff you can do. Now, I quickly found that my great, great grandfather was Swedish. And he came over, his name is Fensen, and as soon as he hit Ellis Island, which I found the record, they changed his name to Swanson. And then he married a woman named Myrtle, and the rest is that side of the family. So I also found the German line. I found the French line. That last name was Malote. And I also found that my last name comes from Ireland. And that was really cool. Didn't find any royalty. In fact, everyone's a farmer. Once you go back more than 100 years, everybody in my family's a, a farmer. And mostly in Ohio. It seems like people came here from a lot of different countries. And as soon as they hit the country, except for a few that hung around in Pennsylvania, all the rest went to Ohio. I don't know why. So the only interesting thing I discovered was that I'm descended from the first baby born after the Mayflower landed in America. And by the way, it didn't land in Plymouth Rock. It landed in Provincetown, a place I vacationed and got married at. And I found out two years after I got married that I was only a few hundred yards away from where the Mayflower actually landed. And pretty close probably to where my great, 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 it's nine greats grandfather, um, Peregrine White, was born. By the way, I searched and searched and searched. I can't find a Native American ancestor. Um, a lot of records at the time say that if a marriage occurred between one of the settlers and one of the Native American people, often they would not record that 
as a Native American. So I may have found him or her and just didn't know it. However, what I love is now I know the people in a lot of these photos. This is my grandmother on my father's side. She's the little girl on the front right. She looks so much like one of my sisters, it's scary. This is my great-grandfather on my mother's side. He raced sulkies. That's the name of that little carriage he's in. The guy with the mustache, that is my great-granduncle on my mother's side. His name is George Stevenson. I found the French family, Malote. They took this picture. That is my great-great-grandmother on my mother's side. She's the one holding the baby. Um, then the oldest photo I could find is this one. This is my great-great-grandfather on my father's side. This is his Civil War photo. He fought for the North. He fought in Pennsylvania. Also, he's Irish, and this is the source of my name. It was either his father or his grandfather came over here from Cork, Ireland, and the last name was spelled K-A-I-N. And sometime between that guy and William here, they changed the name to C-A-I-N. And from what I can tell, it was probably done to align it with the biblical spelling. So, yay. Um, and then, that may be the oldest photo, but the oldest person that I have a photo for is this lady, Margaret Peasley. She is my great, great, great grandmother on my father's side. And I, I thought this was really cool. And so I put this all into this book. That's my parents on the front. That's my mom and dad in the car at their wedding, about to get into the car at their wedding on the back. I printed out like a two dozen copies of this. I sent it to my siblings um, and all of my first cousins. Uh, I think I also sent a copy to a great aunt. But so they're all gone except this one. Um, in fact, later on, I had a, a nephew ask for a copy and I'm like, I don't have any other copies. So I sent him the PDF. So it's really cool. I wanted to talk about this, though, because many people have said, hey, do you have any thing you do that's not related to games? You're like, what hobbies do you have? Well, genealogy. And I wanted to show people that this is something I did. I did all the research. I did all the writing of the book and talking about everything I could find out about these relatives. I have pictures of farms they have. I have a picture of a house that I got off of Google Street View of this is where some relatives used to live about 100 years ago. Um, I found old, I found some people who were so long ago that there wasn't a photo, but I found sketches of them. And it's really cool that I found all this, but here's a point I wanted to make. I did all this in 2018 while I was working on The Outer Worlds. I would work all day at Obsidian, and then I'd go home and I'd do this. And this is kind of what I'm trying to talk about in several of my videos where I'm like, if you really want to do something, you will find time for it. I really wanted to put together my family history and give it to a lot of my relatives. And I did it even though I was super busy trying to put out a brand new game with a brand new IP on an engine, Unreal, that nobody had ever used before. I found time to do this book. All I want to tell you is this. If you walk away with one thing from this video, it's this. If you want to do something, you will find time for it. You will make the time for it. This is proof. This book is proof. I made time to do this. And you can too. Whether you want to learn how to code, whether you want to learn how to do art, whether you want to learn how to use many of the game engines that are out there, whether you want to become a game reviewer, whether you want to get a job in the industry, you can do it. You just have to set aside some time for it and do it every day. It's what I did with this book. So it's what I'm doing now with a third book on the making of Fallout. In fact, I'm trying to put together the definitive timeline. If I do, I'll do a video of it and you guys can give me comments on it. But I just wanted to kind of throw that out there and say, look, I can do things like this even when I'm super busy. You can find time to do it too. So have a good day.